Welcome to the final episode of 2022. You're listening to Hotter Than Health. My name is Eliza Gelman. You know the drill. I wanted to say thank you so much. If you're listening to this right now, chances are you have been listening for a while. If you are new here, I hope you stay. (laughs) We have so many amazing interviews and conversations in 2023 coming up and I wanted to put together an episode for all those listeners and anyone listening, really, who want to just get the peaks of the year. So I selected four different episodes from this year, and I chose what I believed is the most beneficial and tangible takeaway, the the summation of the episode, a a nice long message, uh, knowing that hopefully you will be reminded and inspired and intrigued even even to go back and listen to these episodes. What I did was I went back, looked at numbers, and saw the most downloaded, most popular episodes. And what's funny is the reason why I really, really love this audience and anyone listening to the podcast is because it isn't just about the name. It doesn't it isn't necessarily about having the biggest guest. Who should we have on? Because typically, you know, in the grand scheme of things, if someone has a large following, then they're on the podcast, it gets more downloads, but that isn't always the case here. I think that what we have found is hotter than health listeners really want tangible takeaways and they want the real life scenarios and they want motivation to take the take the next step into elevating their health. I want to say again thank you so much for everyone who's listening who has supported. If you haven't already hopped onto my website you can check out the produce bags that I just came out with. They're a great way to support the show. I really wanted to have something that you could bring to the store. You could take your laptop to a coffee shop in or you could just tote around. It's a great produce bag. I use it at Whole Foods all the time. I use it, well, any grocery store, but it's great for produce because I don't like to use plastic to wrap produce bags or vegetables in or fruits. So I leave it in the tote bag and wash it when I get home. I think you'll love it. Go to ElizaGWellness.com to check it out. But Overall, I think you guys are going to take a listen to, or I think you're going to love taking a listen to these four snippets. It's a brief episode, but overall, it's what you all really enjoyed this year. I hope, and I tried to span it from the beginning of the year towards the end and summarize some of the peaks that we have had on Hotter Than Health. We've got people like, uh, we have our founder of uh, the Prolon for the fasting mimicking. We have Mimi Bouchard. We have us one solo episode we have dr b so there's a nice mixture in there and i hope you all enjoy i hope you have an amazing rest of your new year and it is full of great conference calls healthy food and indulgences movement and rest and reflection and honestly i hope that you start right now it is the 29th of december and i hope that you don't wait until the first to get ahead of what you're looking to accomplish if there's something that you've really wanted to do I say face the fear head on and clear your space, clear your mind, do what you can and try not to fall so hard into the same habits. I think we all reach for the extremes in the beginning of the year, but extremes never extremes never got anywhere sustainably or for the long term. I think making incremental lifestyle adjustments is going to be the name of the game for 2023 and I have a really great feeling about it and I don't know exactly what 2023 is going to bring but I'm excited for the new career that I'm in. I am excited for continuing Hotter Than Health. I'm pumped to be in a situation where I can work out consistently right now. My body's been feeling good. I haven't been getting sick or injured like things are moving beautifully. And without further ado, thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy your new year and enjoy the top clips of 2023 on Hotter Than Health.
but you don't see most of the four killers at younger age. And so the, the goal was, if you want to live healthy and long, you got to keep your biological age younger. So say, Eliza, say you're 30 and, 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 um, and in 10 years, you'll be 40. But in 10 years, if you stay closer to 30 biologically, that's the best thing you can do to your body to stay healthy longer away from the onset of the first chronic disease. That is so what I want. The, that is yeah, what I, want. So I don't care what it, the number is, but I yeah. <laughs> want it to be less than what it is. Exactly. Like based so, on the world, on the calendar. So now I have a completely different view on the health system. It's all about biological age. How young are you from the inside? And it's not about how old are you from the outside. It's how young are you from the inside? And I was like, wow, how can I change a person's youthfulness from the inside? And most aging experts that I traveled and I met with, they said, you got to talk to Professor Walter Longo, who discovered that fasting can induce cellular rejuvenation and keeps you younger from the inside. And he actually made it easy because fasting is a scary word for most of us. And to rejuvenate a cell, you have to stress the body with fasting for three, four or five days. So Professor Longo at USC, the Longevity Institute at USC, they actually came out with this Nutri, I call it Nutri Revolution, Nutri Technology, which is a food for five days that you can consume, keeps your body in a fasting mode, and therefore the cells are rejuvenating. We call that autophagy through fasting, won the Nobel Prize in 2016, and therefore you can stay healthier. You can Your biological age is either slowed down or reversed a little bit, and therefore you create that spread of youthfulness from the inside versus getting old from the outside. Happened and I just got clear and I read this book and the first chapter was take a hundred percent responsibility for your life. And I was a victim. I was, you know, I was, oh, I don't have this because I didn't grow up with a wealthy family. And I, you know, I'm not this because I don't look this way and, you know, all that stuff. So then I just totally like dramatically shifted my life. I changed who I was hanging out with. I changed my environment. I moved to London, England randomly. I decided to become an entrepreneur and start an online magazine blog. And, um, it, you know, obviously that was not generating any income for a long <laughs> time. So I was working like four jobs and I was totally broke. And I moved to one of the most expensive cities in the world, you know, working so many odd jobs, trying to make ends meet, you know, it was just, I posted on my Instagram recently about this. And a lot of people just didn't know. I think a lot of people just assumed that I grew up with wealthy fam like a wealthy family and I was given a lot growing up and that's how I am where I am at 25 but that's actually the complete opposite and I don't think I'd be where I was if I was given everything growing up um and I'm so grateful for my upbringing and how my parents didn't have a lot of money because it it made me value what I wanted you know in the future and it made me hungry so um and you know in my eyes I, I think I I just I needed that hunger and uh yeah. So I post on Instagram about this. I had like nine pounds. I was in London. So that's like $12 in my bank account. At one point I was dog walking, babysitting, working at a juice bar, styling at a, at a styling or styling, interning at a styling agency. And then at the side doing my online magazine and blog, trying to meet as many people. I was plopped into this city that I didn't know anyone. Like I not literally one person, like literally not one person. I didn't know one person. I, and then four years later, or three years later, when I left, I knew everyone. Like I, I literally worked so hard on my network there because I knew that was going to be essential for my success as well. Because one of the principles in that, in that Jack Canfield book I read was your network is your net worth and the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. So I was just like literally following these principles to a T it seems. And it worked and I did a lot of work on myself and, um, you know, I started meditating, um, hated it. I didn't like meditating at all. I, I was like, this is so boring. I don't want to clear my head. I want to go. I want to be motivated. I was very energetic and I always have been a doer. And then I started recording these pep talks to myself in the morning. I was literally recording them on the voice memos on my phone and they'd be like 15 minutes long. And I would just record them when I was in a focused, motivated mood. And I'd listen to them every morning and I'd always change them and talk about my goals. And I would just visualize while doing things in the morning. Um, and I was multitasking while listening to these pieces of audio. So long story short, you know, my experience in London had so many 
cool, crazy experiences. I like went on a TV show for <laughs> a little bit. I like, you know, met all these people and, um, you know, I started and stopped many businesses. And then uh, a couple of years ago, I decided to create a subscription platform for my audience online. Cause I have a big podcast like you, and I have, um, a audience on Instagram and stuff. And I decided, you know, what, I, I kind of just want to do my own subscription platform. I really like the model of that business. And I feel like I have a lot to offer and the past eBooks and courses that I had uh, promoted sold pretty well. So I decided to do a subscription platform all about health and wellness and lifestyle and right at the bottom, you know, next to all like the recipes and the workouts were at the top. And then right at the bottom, I had the meditations and I kind of recorded a similar vibe of those voice notes. I used to record to myself. They were very pragmatic and actionable meditations that were very focused on visualization and manifestation. And then I thought they would not do that well, but I just want to add content to the platform. And they ended up doing the best out of all the content on the platform. And I then pivoted the platform fully and changed the name and got an app development team to create a custom app for me. And now it's superhuman. And it's like, we have the same developers that made Headspace that created the app. Like we have, uh, I now have a full team, like five people full-time under me. I, you know, it's, we have 10,000 paying members like plus, and it's just crazy because That's amazing. You. Yeah. Like, and it, I haven't done any paid marketing. So it's just been word of mouth. People telling each other, this app is different. We have meditations for every moment of the day, which has never been done. Like we have walking meditations, getting ready, meditations, cooking meditations. It's like a good foot in the door for people who don't like meditating. Right. It because really I, is. That person. I didn't like the traditional type of meditation and not to say that that's not beneficial for people. I never want to, um, to have any bad words about traditional meditation because it's a beautiful thing, but it's just not my thing. It is that time of year. Everyone is getting back into the gyms and we know that during January, February, March, the beginning part of that year, the gym is always slammed. The equipment isn't always available. Sometimes you walk in and you get so overwhelmed, you just don't know what to do at the gym. I've definitely had that problem before, and I know that sometimes it's nice to have a guide. It's nice to have a workout already planned, whether you have 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or a full hour, and you can really sink your teeth into a workout. Introducing Mosa On Demand. That is M-O-S-S-A. Mosa On Demand is a subscription-based fitness platform. It is only $9.99 per month, and you can get things like kickboxing. You can get strength training. You can get aerobic dance classes. You can get stretching, mindfulness, recovery, foam rolling, anything that you need. And also, you don't need equipment for a lot of these workouts. And sometimes when you're in the gym and you want to get a little more strength training, but you don't know exactly what to do, but you don't want to sign up for a full gym, you really don't know what you're doing, but you want that weight training aspect. That is something I think Mosa On Demand has done really well. With the code hotter than health 30, you can get 30 extra days for free after your 14 day trial. Again, that is code hotter than health 30 and you can get 44 days for free. After that, a subscription is only $9.99 per month and you can again have workouts 10, 30, 60 minutes. You're going to love it. They have over 300 amazing workouts and all you have to do is go to mosaondemand.net. Use the code hotter than health 30. Give it a try. Fueled by music, coaches, motivation and again, podcast listeners get 30 days for free on top of an already 14 day trial with a coupon code. So you'll get a reminder letting you know that it'll be $9.99 per month and then you're good to go. You have your entire routine already set and you have your habits built. Again, that is mosaondemand.net. Use the code hotter than health 30 and enjoy. There is something about waking up in the morning having your 32 ounces of room temperature water with a little bit of salt, and then knowing before you have your coffee, before the day really, really starts, there's this beautiful in-between time where you drink your Organifi greens juice. Hey, if you're about to go to the gym and maybe you want a little pre-workout, you can sip on your Organifi red juice. Those are two of some of my favorite products, especially for those interested in incorporating one simple hack into their daily wellness routine. The greens powder has 
adaptogens. It has wheat, barley grass, all of the different green components that you would want in your day to day. You're remineralizing, you're getting your essential nutrients, you're getting vitamins, and you are setting your immune system up and gut. You're setting it up for success. Who doesn't want that in the morning? Every morning I do a large mason jar full of water and I do three-fourths of a scoop. I find that one full scoop is a little too much, half not quite enough. So three-fourths of a scoop in a large mason glass full. I drink that every morning and I promise you, it's something where you you might not recognize the day that you're taking it, how big of an impact it's making, but when you do it consistently and then you stop taking it, you will miss it. It is the most simple, delicious addition to your morning routine. I have been using the green apple flavor for the past month and it's definitely my favorite. I've got to say it trumps the original flavor. Love them both. This one is absolutely the best. You can go to Organifi.com, use the code HTH20 for 20% off of any of your orders. You can find some of my favorite products on there like the protein, the reds powder, or the green juice, of course. But for those who are looking for a last minute gift, trying to start the new year right, try the Organifi greens powder, Organifi.com backslash HTH for 20% off. Again, that is HTH for 20% off. Simply, I have some clients who will tell me that they go, number two, they poop two or three times a week, maybe. And they're like, yeah, I've been that way my whole life. It's hard for me to just say you should go every single day and they're like what this is something that i've been dealing with my entire life i didn't know it was an issue how often should be people be pooping and what should the consistency be like in a healthy bowel movement first of all uh i want to warn the listeners that i feel far too comfortable talking about bowel movements because this is what i've done for a living if you've listened to the hotter than health podcast you know that Go off. Say okay. whatever you want. You can paint us a picture. <laughs> like, is it wrapping around twice? Soft bananas? Like, what are we looking at here? Okay, well, I think that it's important for people to understand that to like fully get the picture of a bowel movement, it's so much more than just the frequency. Yeah. Um, you could add, like, right after the frequency, I would add the sort of con- consistency or what does it look like? Frequency and consistency, yes. Yeah, so like those, those to me are like really starting to paint a more robust picture of what's going on. But then the other thing that I want to know about is what does that person experience behind closed doors? Mm. Like what, what's going on when they go to have a bowel movement? Because what does it take to get this thing out kind of thing? Well, because when things are in alignment and working the way that they're, they're supposed to, you know, you you have to, um, consider that the gut thrives on rhythm, much like the heart thrives on rhythm. If you take a person and put them into an abnormal heart rhythm, you could, they could be super healthy. If you knock them into an unhealthy rhythm, they literally can't even climb a flight of stairs, yeah. right? It can be that debilitating. The gut thrives on rhythm. When you throw the gut out of rhythm, you're not gonna, you, you should not expect to feel your best mm-hmm. and to have energy and to um, experience food or things of that variety the way that you're supposed to. So ultimately, we want to get people in the rhythm. And when you're in rhythm, a bowel movement should come at a consistent basis Many times it'll be the same time, not necessarily daily, but it could be daily, but you're going to be consistent in the way that it happens. And also it's effortless. Mm -hmm. Bowel movements aren't supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be easy. Like pleasurable. It's supposed to be pleasurable and it's supposed to be something that you don't have to like, certainly not break a sweat, but like you, you don't even have to try. You just, you feel the urge, you step into the restroom, you have this like five minute thing. It actually feels really good and you step out satisfied. Five minutes. Wow. Yeah. That's some time. I well, like, I, but maybe not to some people. Maybe they're on their phone hanging out and doing their thing. Yeah, Do you, or less. But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, what about consistency? What are we looking at here? What do we What do we not want to see? Well, okay. So they they actually created something that allows us to evaluate the consistency of a bowel movement, mm-hmm. and and that way, like if you and I are talking about a bowel movement, mm-hmm. we can um, say it's this particular type, mm-hmm. and we're both referring to the same thing. Yeah. And this is called the Bristol stool scale. Mm-hmm. So, and the Bristol stool scale has seven different types of bowel movements. And the, the one that you want, 
Um, not that you should be uh, anxious if you're slightly deviant from this, but like the one that you want is a Bristol type four. It's right in the middle. And the Bristol four is basically like uh, a sausage shaped bowel movement. Mm -hmm. So it's got a shape, it's formed, it's soft. Um, it's not too lumpy bumpy with cracks. And that, that is your Bristol four. I work with a ton of women who call me for the three month nutrition program that I do. And they have all said that they experimented with macro calc calculating and tracking, but it almost gave them s disordered eating issues and habits. Not saying that this causes eating disorders. I'm not saying that all correlation and causation is the same. It's more just the fact that when you become restrictive and you rely on an external source to tell you when you should or shouldn't be hungry, that's when it becomes really challenging to intuitively eat and enjoy food as a whole. With caloric intake, I think there are some general rules of thumb that are helpful when you're when you're trying to lose weight because it is it is important you know you're not going to be in a surplus if you're trying to lose weight and i mean you know if your doctor has told you that you need to lose weight or if if your hormones are a problem and you know you need to lose healthy weight just for your health this is not like a phobia thing it's just if if you're if it's affecting your overall health and longevity it's time to act on these things you're probably not going to be in a surplus Things like MyFitnessPal, I will say, there's no one monitoring you while you're putting in your information in MyFitnessPal. There's nobody saying, there's nobody to be the voice of reason. I find so often that people always undervalue the amount that they're actually putting forth throughout the day and how much they're actually eating. Because 90 times, 90 times out of 10, people are or out of 100, people say, oh my God, I eat a ton throughout the day. But actually, they're under eating, which could cause fat retention or weight retention. Uh, us, other times, people may not be eating balanced meals. So they're just having like five scoops of peanut butter and then some dessert and they're all over the place and they don't have balanced meals. And so they end up just having like all of their calories coming from fat. There's not a ton of nutrients or variety or fiber or anything really nutrient dense. What typically happens when you go into my fitness pal is it asks you for age, height, and activity level amongst a couple of other things. It's pretty general. It's not asking if you have thyroid issues, if you're on medication, or if you've had children. It doesn't incorporate any of those things. And I would say often women specifically, it will say, they'll say that they're maybe less active than they actually are, or they will put in that they weigh less or they want extreme weight loss. So there's an option of weight, muscle gain, weight gain, mild weight gain, maintenance, mild weight loss, extreme weight loss. And oftentimes people think extreme weight loss. They're like, why wouldn't I want extreme weight loss? Well, fuck, because it's not sustainable. And if you want extreme, like when has it ever been sustainable to do anything extreme? Okay. So what often happens is people will get uh they'll get an image of how much protein, how much carb, how much fat to eat throughout the day to equal the amount of calories. This works for someone some people I'm not trying to villainize this at all. This is just what I've seen. Often people will be at the end of the day and they're like, "Oh my god, I still have 30 grams of protein to hit or 40 grams of protein to hit, but I'm over my fats, but oh my gosh, this won't taste good without avocado or you know, it becomes this entire thing and we become very obsessive and oftentimes if we go over our calories, then we feel like, "Oh my gosh, I'm this behemoth of a person who can't even stay underneath her calories when in all respects, your calories were far too low. So if you're a woman of any shape, size, lifestyle, and it's saying 1200 calories per day, chances are that's extreme. And we really, it's not sustainable, especially in the day and age where we have so many decisions to be making on a daily basis. We're constantly interacting and stimulated, um, the goal is not to just completely cut out entire meals or cut them in half and then we're starving throughout the day and then hormones become fucked up. It's a huge, huge issue that thyroids and other types of your metabolism, other things become, they become not paralyzed, but they're 
these diets wreak havoc on hormones, which can lead to extreme weight gain, weight uh, metabolism can get fucked up. And I don't think that these apps necessarily cater to anyone specifically. 